Good evening, Booktube, YouTube. This is Johnny. Thought I'd make a video. It's been two or three days here in West Michigan. It is 7.03 at night. It is February the 21st. It is a Tuesday here in West Michigan. And uh, I'm down on the lower level. This is where I store my collection of books. I'm a book collector, a bibliophile. I love books and do the God's goodness. His, I am able to acquire books. Uh, and majority of the books in my library are used. They're not brand new. I get them from thrift stores. As you know, I've mentioned so many times, I volunteer at the local library used bookstore, the Book Nook. I have going on 12 years. I go. I used to go to used book sales. Well, I just showed you one. We went to Hudsonville just last week. We went to a used library used book sale in Hudsonville. And, um, but mostly I get my books from thrift stores, Salvation Army, Goodwill, Bibles from Mexico, uh, different libraries sell used books. And, uh, like we go to Finville Public Library south of us, they have a used book room. We only go when the weather's really nice. Right now it's winter time, so we don't travel that much. So in this video I was going to show you some of the uh, books I got from the Book Nook. As I've mentioned, the Book Nook, I mean the our public library, the one that the Book Nook is at, is withdrawing books, taking books out of circulation. And when I go to volunteer, I go in the back and I see what books have been taken out of circulation and I I look for them, something I, maybe I want. So uh, some of these I'll show, and some I just got from the bookstore, the used bookstore, the book nook. I bought in the store. So uh, one thing I'm going to show you is that um, two Bob Dylan biographies were taken out of circulation. This one here. Uh, Down the Highway, The Life of Bob Dylan by Howard Soans. As I've mentioned, I'm not a hardcore Bob Dylan fan, but I do collect his music. Not, I'm not a fanatic, but I have a Bob Dylan collection, biographies, his uh, different... I've shown those over the years, my Bob Dylan collection. But I got this one, and then... He, uh, the one who wrote this, this Bob Dylan biography, he also wrote this biography that's in my library. It's on Charles Bronkowski. Uh, Locked in the Arms of a Crazy Life, a biography by Howard Stones. So he wrote the one on Bob Dylan, he wrote on Charles Bronkowski. And then I picked up this biography, uh, at the book nook. This was on sale. I think I paid th two or three dollars for it. The Ballad of Bob Dylan, a portrait by Mark Daniel Mark Epstein. Epstein. Now I have two other I have other biographies by Daniel Mark Epstein. He did this one, What Lips My Lips What Lips My Lips Have Kissed. The Loves and Love Poems of Ida Edna St. Vincent Millay by Daniel Mark Epson. And I just bought this, I got this for my birthday in August. Rapture and Mel Melancholy, The Diaries of Edna St. Vincent Millay, edited by Daniel Mark Epstein. And he also wrote this biography I have in my library by Daniel Mark Epstein, Sister Amy. The Life of Amy Simple, Simple McPherson. She was an early 20th century, I think she was an evangelist. 
a soldier of the Salvation Army. She was a scamp in school, a young widow in China, a neurotic housewife in Rhode Island. But when the Lord spoke to her as she was at death's door, she accepted her ministry. She preached up and down the United States rapidly in 1912, Packard with her mother and her children without a man to fix tires. She preached in tents, concert halls, boxing rings, speakeasies, prayed for the healing of hundreds of thousands of people, founded a church, built a Pentecostal temple of Hollywood dimensions in Los Angeles. Then it goes on. So, so he wrote uh, Daniel Mark Epson, he wrote Sister Amy, and then he a little biography on the poet, poetess, Edna St. Vincent Millay, and then I just got his uh, Ballad of Bob Dylan, a portrait. So, as you all know, I'm into biographies and poetry and Bob Dylan, and so I got those. And then I picked up at the book nook, a biography in Washington Irving, an American original by Brian J. Jones. Washington Irving was a very famous 19th century American writer. He wrote like, oh, Rip Van Winkle. And he wrote all kinds of things. Uh, History of New York. Anyway, the Legend of Sleepy Hollow, Rip Van Winkle, Irving was a lawyer, diplomat, presidential confident, confident, but he also a fun-loving, officially charming scamp known for his sharp wit and scintillating conversation, especially among the ladies. Anyway, I have a, a, I have a Washington Irving collection, as you all know, I'm in a I am a student of American literature, especially 19th century. So this is right up my alley. And then I picked up uh, Gorgie's World. He was an illustrator, an artist for the New Yorker. We've always seen, if you know the New Yorker, you've seen his kinds of drawings. I collect, I have a New Yorker magazine collection. He, uh, this is a book of his art. So, there's a photo of him here. So, I have other books by Gorgi, Gorky's Worlds. I have other things by him. And I collect books on FDR. And this was in the book nook. It was for sale in the store. FDR, A Centennial Remembrance by Joseph Epsot. I collect by this Joseph Epsot. I've shown you over the years. He had a brother. They were economists for many years during the 40s, 50s, I think maybe 60s. And this I picked up from my Joseph Epsot collection. This is a picture of him in the flap Joseph Epsot. He was a very uh, very prominent communist. He wrote he wrote books. He was uh, never married. He lived in Washington D.C. He was uh, just a very interesting journalist. This was a I paid twelve dollars for this book. This is uh, Saul Steinberg Illuminations. He was also an illustrator for the New Yorker. And I picked this book up. I bought it in the store. He was, uh, I wouldn't call him a cartoonist. But I call him more of an artist. But it was really a nice book. It was only 1250 And it looked interesting and uh, very nice drawings and illustrations. So I picked that up. And then I picked up a novel, High Diet by Jonathan Lee. When I saw this, it was this, I bought this in the book nook. It cost me $2, but I had just finished reading jo Jonathan Lee's novel, 
The Great Mistake, which I showed you a couple of weeks ago. And this was his novel that he's kind of known for, is High Dive by Jonathan Lee. So I picked that up for $2. And then I picked up this book I, I got from my uh, 60s collection, The Tayo of Physics. I can't by Campray. This is a very famous book, and I don't know. It was only a dollar fifty, and I wanted it. It came out first in 1975, and I just got it for my just kind of curiosity. It's a very famous book, The Tayo of Physics. This was a library withdrawal, The Man of Feeling by Javier Morenas. He was, uh, I think he was a, I can't remember, I think he was, I think he was a S S Spanish writer. Oh, uh, can't remember. Anyway, I collect his writings. The Man of Feeling by Javier Morenas. I just showed you one of his books. This is published by New Directions. Uh, but I collect his writings. There's a picture of him in the back. This also was a library withdrawal. Satin Island by Tom McCarthy. I collect his writings. He's like a, a British intellectual. I collect his writings and this was a library withdrawal. I never heard of this. He's a, a Cuban writer. He lives in the United States. Pablo Medina. Cuba City Blues. This is a novel. It's not a translation. Uh, he's written fiction, he's a poet, he's written a, a memoir, translations. I just picked this up. These are all two dollars. I picked up a, a memoir by Peter Fonda because I've been reading on Dennis Hopper and I wanted to read about Peter Fonda and his memoir, Don't Tell Dad, about the filming of Easy Rider, the film. And so it's only two dollars I picked it up this cost me 750 this is an art book this is the library withdrawal pop art it's all on pop art but you know I'm interested in pop art in the 60s and pop art it's all about pop art and uh, so I picked this up for seven fifty. Just all about pop art, pop artists, the whole phenomenon of pop art. So I picked this up. It's by Tillman Osterwad. So those are the ones I I have more over there. I just want to show you what I I got from the book nook lately. Um, add to my collections on art and pop art and FDR. I have a huge FDR collection. I'd like to read biographies. If I'm going to read about historical period, like the time uh, FDR was president for four terms and he covered a huge chunk of 19th, 20th century history. That's why I read about FDR. And uh, I wanted to read another novel by Jonathan Lee, so I picked up High Dive. I really enjoyed, didn't blow me away, but I enjoyed his reading his novel, The Great Mistake. And uh, this is really a nice book. I couldn't pass it up, even though it's 1250. Uh, I just like the art, the illustrations, it's just really nice. And I'm always reading about 19th century writers, uh, Nathaniel Hawthorne, Washington Irving, Mark Twain, 
Emerson, Thoreau, Emily Dickinson, Margaret Fuller, uh, people like that. Uh, I, so I picked this up. I have a huge Washington Irving collection over there. And I'm always into Bob Dylan. And I collect the writings of Charles Bronkowski. Uh, his poetry, his writings. And one of my favorite poets is Edna St. Vincent Millay. Like I said, for my birthday, I bought this, her Rapture and Melancholy, The Diaries of Edna, Edna St. Vincent Millay, edited by Mark Daniel Mark Epstein. I also got this book in the mail. This is a memoir by Carolyn Brown, Chance and Circumstance, 20 Years with John Cage and Mince Cunningham. John Cage and... Cunningham, who that's Cunningham, the he was a very famous dancer, avant-garde dancer, and John Cage uh, composed the music for his dance. And I wanted this, and she was a dancer in that uh, Mince Cunningham's dance. Uh, but what's the word? Um, can't remember the word. But anyway, she covers twenty years. Of when she danced for Cunningham and Cunningham and John Cage were partners. They were kind of, and they had a relationship together. And this is about her time with them. And uh, I collect memoirs, and I wanted to read more about that time period. There's a picture of John Cage, a very avant-garde composer. So I picked this up. Chance and Circumstance, 20 Years with Cage and Cunningham, a memoir by Carolyn Brown. Carolyn Brown, she's, I think she's still living. She was a, a dancer. So. so I also picked this book up, The Book Nook. What it is, the formless thing which gives form. It's all about writing, being a writer, and it's put in a graphic novel form, but it's not a graphic novel. It's about being writing and what being a writer entails. I bought this from the book nook. It cost me a couple of dollars, but I was kind of, I like, it was unusual. Her name is Linda Berry. What it is, do you wish you could write? She goes, she goes around and gives workshops on writing and be, what it means to be a writer. and It's all about that. So I grabbed it from the book for a couple of dollars. Well, this is running out. 20 minutes. This thing shuts down. 21 minutes. So I thought I'd just show you these books. Today is a Tuesday. It's a Tuesday night. My wife's across the street at the Women's Neighborhood Book Club. And I'm just kind of hanging out down here in the lower level. Tomorrow is a Wednesday. We're supposed to be hit with an ice storm Wednesday and Thursday. I don't plan to go anywhere. But anyway. I'm still reading these books. I haven't given up on them. I'm just giving a break. I'm still reading uh, The Night Inspector by Frederick Bursch. I'm still reading that. I'm still reading Will Self's essay, Selected Writings, Why Read? I'm still reading Je Je Jeanette Witherson's Frankenstein. I'm still reading uh, Donna Mc McDowd and the Politics of Circle. This is nonfiction by Gregory D. Simmer. Still reading Everybody Thought We Were Crazy, Dennis Hopper, Brooke Hayward, 1960 Los Angeles by Mark Resco. And I'm still reading Louis Galepsto. Almost done with this. I just can't, you know, I give a break and I go back to him. So 20 minutes is coming. I got to close. Thank you for the new subscribers. 
Thank you for your comments. I do pray you're having a good reading week. And until next time, bye.